so this is uh, chapter 72 about the TCP and UDP. The t both the TCP and the UDP uh, uses the port numbers to um, address the different applications that they are using. For instance, here we have a server that is both a HTTP, a web server, and an SMTP, a mail server. So for it to be able to differentiate between the different um, uh, sessions that connect to it, and finding out whether this is for my my web server part or this is for my mail server part. Well, then we need some kind of addressing for that. And for that purpose, we use the port numbers. So here, if client 1 send a request on port 80, well, then the server will know that it should be sent to my web server. And uh, client 2 sends a request on port 25, well, then the server will know that this is for my mail server part. So we are using the destination ports that the clients use when they send a request to the server to uh, find out to which application to send it. The source port from which the clients are sending is just a random number. Um, yeah, it's just generated by the client itself. When TCP um, establishes a connection, it uses something called a three-way handshake. That is to establish uh, the destination device uh, and that it is present on the network. It verifies that the destination uh, service is uh, an active service and it also informs the destination device that now we are going to try to send something to you. The first thing that happens is that the client sent a request to the server that now I would like to communicate with you. So it will send a SYN uh, flag which uh, validates and set the sequence number. The sequence number is something that the uh, both the client and the and the server is using to keep track on the way the segments are sent. So we need to send a sequence number that this is which the sequence number that we will start with. Um, and then it sends this to the server. And here again, it's on port 80. We would like to communicate on port 80. Uh, and the random source port is set to uh, 1061. The next step is that the server acknowledges the client communicate, the client's syn uh, packet with a, an acknowledgement back uh, and then the server also set its uh, sequence number to some kind of a number. This is just the acknowledgement and then the client will need to acknowledge the uh, the SYN or the, the segment number that the, the server uh, is using as well. So when this three-way, these three packages is sent back and forth, well then we can establish that. Well then the 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 connection is established and we can start sending data between the client and the server. Same thing will happen when we need to terminate it when we close the session. In this case, uh, the A sends uh, to B that it is finished, and B sends an acknowledgement back, and then B sends back to A that it is also finished and then it sends an acknowledgement back. The sequence numbers is just a number that is set uh, on the first segment and uh, incremented by one from the rest of the segments so that um, we will know in which order that these segments are sent. So if they are received in a different order well, then we can rearrange them into the correct order on the client that's receiving them. The acknowledgement uh, numbers um, is because we, we acknowledge when we have received something, we acknowledge it or TCP acknowledges it. Uh, if we should do that with every small packet, well, then you have to wait a lot. Just wait to get, to get an acknowledgement before you can send the next packet or the next segment. So we set the window size to how many how many bytes would we allow um, to the source 
to transmit before we need to acknowledge it. Um, like here, for instance, if the window size is set to 3000, well, then we will allow um, 3000 bytes before we send an acknowledgement. And we can see here that um, we send an acknowledgement to number 3001 over here because this will tell the receiver or the sender that we will acknowledge or we will we will um, receive number 3001 next time because we have received up until 3000 and we will um, like to get number 3001 now when I acknowledge this and the window size is set to 3000 well then I'll know I have received all packages or all segments from 1 and up to 3000 uh, by sending this acknowledgement so then we can send again from the next ones from 3000 up to 6000 and I set an acknowledgement to 6001 and then I know that this is the one I would like to have the next time and then also here if something is lost well then it will know what is lost and what is need to be resent because it has an acknowledgement number for 3001 and somehow if something goes wrong uh, during the next uh, 3000 bytes well then it will just send again the acknowledgement to 3001 and it can also adjust the window size if I know that the window size is set too big so I will not be able to the sender um, can or the receiver cannot cope with so much data at the time well then the um, receiver can send back to the, the sender that I would like to set the window size down for instance to 500 or to 1500 so the window size can change during the communication um, Again here, if I send a lot of different segments, one, two, three, four, five, and something goes wrong with number two, and I will just acknowledge that I have received number one by sending an acknowledgement for two, because next time I will receive number two. Um, and even if I get three, four, five, I will, and they are okay, I will still need to get number two to be able to have everything in order. So then I will send an acknowledgement back, I will receive number two next time. And then, okay, the, the, the server or the sender will then start sending number two, three, four, five, and six, and so on. So the acknowledgement numbers tells it, says that we have received things correctly. And if we don't, well, then we need, we need to resend it. Whereas when we are looking at the UDP protocol, we don't resend anything. Uh, we just send something and then we will, yeah, if it's, if it's received or not, we don't really care. It's um, used by application who cannot tolerate delay. So here the speed of the connection is more important than if you lose a packet or two. For instance, the DNS server, but most uh, importantly, uh, both voice over IP, uh, online games, video streaming, it doesn't really matter if one or two small packages is missing. We will probably not notice that. Um, here, it's more important that um, we have a, a, a higher bandwidth. And because UDP has less overhead, then it is much faster than using TCP. The uh, UDP does not reassemble anything. So if uh, we have datagram 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we only receive them in 1, 2, 6, 5, 4, well, then that's how it is. Then that's what we get. And we will not notice that we have lost one because TDP uh, or UDP does not handle that. Um, but it uses the same way it uses... Um, the port numbers to send requests to, for instance, port number 53 here um, or to a radius server here in 1812. And we are using the same source port here, which is just randomly generated. If you look at the protocols that's using uh, TCP, we can see that HTTP 
for web traffic, FTP for file transfer, SMTP for mail and telnet are all using TCP. Uh, the protocols using UDP is DHCP for um, assigning IP addresses, DNS for translating between IP and, and uh, host and domain names, SNMP for um, uh, management protocol for simple network management protocol, TFTP and voice over IP and IPTV are all using uh, UDP. And that's it. Thank you.